Hello everyone, welcome to the SQLT channel. In this video, we are going to do something different. The problem that we are going to solve here is kind of challenging. We have a big equation and we are going to solve it. On the left hand side, we have this x plus 1 over x and on the right hand side, we have two terms that are multiplying by each other. Each term includes two subterms. Let's talk about each subterm now. We have this radical 1 minus x and x over radical 1 minus x. So we kind of have a symmetry here. And for the second term, we have radical 1 plus x minus x over radical 1 plus x. So altogether, we see that there are symmetry in this equation that we are trying to solve. Obviously, we are going to find x and we are interested in real values of x. Now let's talk about the solution. But first, make sure that you try the problem yourself for a few moments and then come back to talk about the solution. To solve this, I'm going to take a moment to simplify it a little bit further. Left hand side is x plus 1 over x, which is kind of okay. But on the right hand side, I have two big terms. I'm going to start with focusing on the first term of these two terms. I have this radical 1 minus x and x over radical 1 minus x. If I do simplification, you can see that I'm going to end up with a fraction with radical 1 minus x on the bottom. And for top, I will have power of 2 of this radical 1 minus x, which is basically 1 minus x, and then I need to add x. Altogether, I'm going to simplify it as 1 over radical 1 minus x. If you follow the same approach, you're going to end up with the same kind of thing for the second term. Instead, we are going to have this 1 over radical 1 plus x. Now let's focus on this simplified form. I'm going to continue with more simplification. Basically, instead of having this multiplication of those terms, I'm going to have just the outcome, which is basically one over radical one minus x squared. Now, if we take a look at what we have, the first thing that we can do is to try to remove this radical. And doing so, we're going to take power of two of both sides. On the left-hand side, I will end up with x squared plus one over x squared plus two. And on the right hand side, I will have this 1 over 1 minus x squared. Now I'm going to do a trivial thing, which is basically trying to remove all this fraction and move everything to the left hand side. Doing so, first of all, I'm going to simplify what I have on the left hand side and then what I have on the right hand side and then multiply everything by this x squared times 1 minus x squared and then move everything to the left hand side. What you are going to end up with is negative x to the power of 4 plus 1 minus x to the power of 6 equals to 0. For this particular thing here, we didn't do much. We just simplified based on some algebraic rules. From here, it's going to be tricky. Let's focus on those. Let's start by multiplying a negative 1 to both sides of this equation to have this x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 4 minus 1 equals to 0. Now obviously I have this x to the power of 4 and x to the power of 6. I'm going to replace x to the power of 2 with y. Then I will have this y to the power of 3 plus y to the power of 2 minus 1 equals to 0. Obviously, I try to do this to reduce the degree of this polynomial that I have to be able to solve it. But now I have this degree three polynomial that I need to solve and it's not easy. However, what I can do is to try to make a cubic expression. To do this, I have this y to the power of three and I have this y squared. Obviously, I don't want to have anything that I don't already have. So instead of having this y to the power of 3 plus y squared, what I'm going to do is 
I'm going to start with y plus 1 over 3 to the power of 3. But if you take this power of 3, you're going to end up with y to the power of 3, 3 times y to the power of 2 times 1 over 3, and so on and so forth. As you can see, this y to the power of 3 and y to the power of 2 are already here. However, I'm going to have something more than what I need. The terms that I have, and I really don't need them, are y over 3 and 1 over 27. So I'm going to get rid of those. And then I already have this negative 1 equals to 0. Now I have this y plus 1 over 3 to the power of 3 minus y over 3 minus 1 over 27 minus 1 equals to 0. The first thing that I'm going to do is to move this power of 3 to the left hand side and everything else to the right hand side. And then I'm going to just simplify. I will end up with y plus 1 over 3 to the power of 3 equals to 9y plus 28 over 27. Now let's solve this. To do this, I'm going to replace this y plus 1 over 3 with k. I think the reason is obvious. On the left hand side, I will have this k to the power of 3. And then instead of this y, I'm going to use this 3k minus 1, and the rest is going to be some simplification. At the end, what I'm going to have is k cubed minus k over 3 minus 25 over 27 equals to 0. Now I need to solve this problem. And I think you have a kind of feeling that where I'm heading to. The trick here is to use Cardano's formula to solve this cubic polynomial that we have. First of all, in the polynomial that we have, we have this depressed cubic polynomial. Because in the regular polynomial that we have for cubic case, we have this ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus c equals to zero. If b is zero, then we are going to have this depressed cubic polynomial and we are going to use this Cardano's formula to solve it. The thing that is interesting is you can use the equations that we have here to find the roots of these equation. However, the most important part is x1, x2, and x3 are going to be the roots, but x2 and x3 are complex values. And remember, in the problem that we have, we are interested in real values. So we are going to just use x1, which is basically s plus t minus b over 3a. Here, in our case, b is 0, so we just need to find the values that we have for s and t, and one of them is going to be s plus t based on the definition that we have. Based on that, we are going to continue. Now what I did was I just used the values to find this s and t and then I have the final value for k. However, remember, we defined y as k minus 1 over 3. We are going to do that and then we have this x as radical y, so the final answer is going to be the one that you are seeing here. Thanks for watching the video. If you would like to see more puzzles, math involved activities, and problems from different math competitions and Olympiads, please subscribe to this channel. This is the SQRT channel. I hope to see you in the next video.